Hi, my name is Emil. I'm the founder and CEO at Tomorrow Bio. Today, I want to discuss two fundamental concepts in the field of life extension. On one hand, there's longevity escape velocity. And on the other hand, there's life extension by cryopreservation. So both concepts have the same ultimate goal. They should not be confused with what is called health extension. The idea that by medical advances, you know, improvements in technology, we will be able to live, you know, healthily, you know, fit mentally and physically healthy when we're old, right? You know, when you're 85 or 95, you will not spend your time in bed or bedridden or with low, you know, physical you know, capabilities, but, you know, you're fit and you're healthy and everything. But health extension only goes so far. You will be healthy when you're old, but then you will probably still die at, let's say, 85 or 90 or somewhere in that range. The concept of longevity as escape velocity also includes the concept of being healthy when you're old, but then living significantly longer. The idea here is that by technological advance, by improvements in medical technology, every year you grow older, one year of additional lifespan will be added. So let's say you're 85, right? Now, at the time when you're 85, by doing treatments, by doing, you know, taking medication and whatever else there might be, of course, also just by living healthy, you might be able to have them pushed your lifespan to 90. Now, in those extra five years, technology will advance more. And then while these five years go on, you might gain another five years by, you know, taking new medication or doing new treatments. That is what this escape velocity concept is about, where every time you age another five years or 10 years, you gain more than five years of maximum lifespan. And then at least conceptually, you might live indefinitely or at least as long as you choose to do so. Cryopreservation has the same ultimate goal, where in the future, once it's possible to reverse cryopreservation, medical technology might have advanced enough so that you can live as long as you, as, as you choose to do so, practically indefinitely. So where both concepts are similar or even the same is in the ultimate goal, giving people the choice to choose how long they would like to live and not having their lifespan determined by any external factors, be it diseases or you name it. So over the last couple of years, there has been a tremendous amount of new interest in the field of longevity or life extension. Even though, of course, it's a bit of a mix of health extension, where some companies do stuff that will be most likely only be useful for health extension. Life extension, the fact of extending maximum lifespan, also has gotten more and more attention with more and more funding and more and more focus. Now, billions of dollars are being spent every year in that field. So there's more activity going on. There's more stuff that is happening. And of course, arguably, there's also a larger market than at least currently there is in cryopreservation. The fundamental difference between going towards life extension or longevity escape velocity or cryopreservation is that while there is more funding, more activity in the field of longevity, maybe even partly towards uh, longevity escape velocity or reaching longevity escape velocity, you kind of need, you kind of have a cutoff point when longevity escape velocity needs to be reached. And that is kind of, you know, at the time when you might get some incurable disease at old age, or unfortunately, even though it's statistically not that likely, also at younger years. So if the medical advancement has not reached a certain level of, you know, capabilities, at a time when you're old or being diagnosed with a terminal disease, then, you know, there's a cutoff point. Either the technology is around before that cutoff point, or if you're older, you might be, you know, left behind in quotation. On the other side, cryopreservation, of course, is a technology that can be used any day, right? Even if someone gets diagnosed with a terminal disease tomorrow, they can be cryopreserved. But cryopreservation also has some downsides. The main one here, of course, being that due to the fact that the field is relatively underfunded right now, little funding goes into it, little research is being done due to that funding shortage. There's a lot of open questions. The most important one being that currently, while you're able to cryopreserve people and under good circumstances, you can do that with relatively good quality as well. It is not yet clear if and when it will be possible to bring someone back from cryopreservation. So the main advantage is if someone is being diagnosed with a terminal disease right now, longevity escape velocity is long in the future. So there's no choice to be done there. 
On the other hand, cryopreservation can be chosen right now. But of course, it's kind of a bet. It's a bet or a gamble. It's a gamble on future technology where people who are cryopreserved today need to rely on medical advancements while they're in cryopreservation that then arguably, it's not clear when, but at some point, hopefully would be able to bring those people back from cryostasis and then not only bring them back, but also are able to cure the underlying disease that will likely be the smaller problem. And of course, bring them back at a time when the remaining years of life left due to advances in medical technology and longevity technologies are relevant. Of course, it doesn't make sense to bring someone back who's 85 and then the average life expectancy of an 85 year old might be 87. Now, of course, only makes sense if there's a, you know, a relevant amount of years of life left. So in my or our opinion, working on longevity escape velocity and on cryopreservation is very important. One cannot really do without the other. Of course, it doesn't make sense to cryopreserve someone. And then even once it's possible to bring them back, they need longevity escape velocity, right? They need rejuvenation. They need the opportunity to have a good amount of years of life left when they're being brought back. So both is very important. The difference between these fields is that the field of longevity is funded by you know, many, many billions a year. I would say it's not yet funded enough. I would like to see more funding in the space, but there is a good amount of funding in that field already. On the other hand, cryopreservation is currently extremely underfunded, right? You know, couple of you know tens of millions per year in the whole field. So significantly more funding is needed there. On the other hand, you can sign up for cryopreservation basically every day of the week, right? So if you want to, in quotation marks, protect yourself, even though it's unknown yet if and when it will be possible to bring someone back. But then again, if someone is being diagnosed with a terminal disease, let's say cancer, then the alternatives that people have as a choice, if they're being diagnosed with that disease, Basically, on one hand, they can be cremated or buried, where, as far as we know, there's no chance of coming back. Or, on the other hand, they can choose to be cryopreserved. So it's not really a choice between longevity and scale velocity or cryopreservation. In fact, I would personally hope to never need to be cryopreserved, right? I'd just much rather do some type of treatment or take some type of medication regimen and then just live as long as I would like to. But... If I should be diagnosed with a disease that currently leads to death without anything being able to be done about it, in that case, I would definitely choose cryopreservation if my alternative is only burial or, you know, cremation. So longevity, escape velocity, and cryopreservations are not really opposing concepts at all. They're two different ways of reaching the same ultimate goal, being able to choose how long you would like to live. We are tomorrow can't really help with longevity and scale velocity. We're working on cryopreservation. So if cryopreservation is something that you're interested in and would like to learn more, check us out at tomorrow.bio, subscribe to that channel. And if you want to talk to us directly, feel free to schedule a consultation. You can do that at tomorrow.bio, our webpage. We're more than happy to talk to you, discuss, answer open questions, and make sure that you understand the topic from A to Z before you might want to decide to sign up for cryopreservation. Thank you so much for watching. Keep track of what we're publishing next. This is Emil from Tomorrow Bio. Talk to you soon.